Today we're going to cover how to make a floating vertical navigation bar in Divi. As you can see we have our sandbox page here and I've narrowed up the usual um, header that we have up top so we're going to keep that and this one's going to float up top left and be a fixed nav that will scroll with the page. Um, and this way it'll be kind of outside of our um, containered content. It'd be different for your site but this will give you the general idea of how to turn the uh, Divi menu module into a vertical nav. So as you can see, uh, we've set our example CTA menu from a previous video as the menu. Uh, we're not going to worry about a logo in this case, and we're going to turn off any elements such as shopping cart and search. And we're going to design for layout. You can see that uh, there's really only a few options. There's left aligned, there's centered, and there's inline centered logo. There's not even right aligned. We addressed that in the video about styling a specific button in a menu. Feel free to check that one out. Uh, but for this purpose, we want to make it vertical. So the way we do that is you'll pop over to the live site. We'll just demonstrate what needs to be done here. So these are some example styles that I've shown in just the inspector. So we'll turn these off. And the way we found this is this right here is our Divi column, the menu module, and then the inner container. And then I just drilled down until we made it to the actual unordered list icon, or element rather, of the menu items. And so when we just apply display flex and flex direction column, then these are now pointed vertically. So far as being glitchy, had these actually turned off there. It'll look like that. And when we turn these back on, then it will go vertical. So far as just having a fun time today. But we're going to grab those styles and we want to target this in a way that will be unique to only this menu. We don't want to affect the top menu here. So we're going to give this a class of, or we can give it an ID. There should be only be one on the page. Give it an ID of vertical floating nav. Copy that. I'll go into the page settings here. This is in our overall page settings for the sandbox, but typically you'd be editing this in the um, theme builder header, and then you'd be editing the quote unquote page settings for just the header. That way it would appear on every page, but this will work for our testing purposes here. You can see some custom CSS that I've added to make this narrower than it usually is on the regular site. And so we're going to, oh, there we go, vertical floating nav. And then we want to drill down to exactly that position. So it looks like we can just say uh, down to this nav element. When we go here, there is a full separate for the mobile nav. We'll address that later if we need be. But for now, we'll just make sure we get into mobile menu and then the UL underneath that. So we have the hashtag for ID, space, dot for class, and then UL for the owner list. And then we'll say display flex and we will say flex direction column. There we go. Check that and save. Now for most purposes, that would be all you really need to know to make it vertical. Uh, we're gonna do some extra special things though. So we're gonna keep on tweaking. Now we can still use our lovely uh, Divi editor for some styling. So I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna make the um, menu text this kind of darker black color. We're gonna make the font semi, no, we'll go bold. And we're going to up the text size to maybe 16, uh, 17, sure. that sounds nice. And that looks nice. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go content, background, and we're gonna apply it's sort of like partially um, partial opacity. We'll actually apply it this gray and we'll apply it with a low opacity. And we can kind of see where the box is. Okay, and actually come to think of it, that's gonna to apply to the whole width um, and I don't really want to mess with that. So I'm actually going to disregard that, but I do like that gray that we just created. So I'm gonna recreate that. Grab the gray, bring the opacity down. I like that, I'm gonna grab that gray and then I'm going to delete that. Go back to our CSS here and I'm gonna style the UL itself, which would be this unordered list. And so we're gonna say background that gray. And you can see then that is nicely contained to just those menu options. And then I'll give it a bit of padding on the top of 20 pixels and a bit of padding, padding top 20 pixels and on the sides, we'll give it um, 
10 pixels and we're gonna have to override some Divi styles. So we're going to, we don't wanna overuse important, but it is very handy when you're styling against a theme builder like Divi. So we're gonna use that and we're gonna hit the check mark and save because we know sometimes the style editor sometimes glitches and resets itself. So we wanna hit that green check mark and save as often as we can. Now, to move us forward, let's get this up in the top left corner. So to do that, we're going to go to the section settings and we're gonna to have to override the section a bit. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start by saying display, or rather position fixed, and then top is already gonna be zero, but we're just gonna set it anyway. Left is gonna be zero. And then I wanna make sure that the background of the section is set to transparent. Save. And so we're already getting there. It's really jammed up toward the top though. So let's fix that up. Um, just for ease of us to identify it, let's add an admin label called floating uh, top left nav. That way when we go into the Divi editor and this block editor, we can kind of grab it because it's gonna look a lot different now in the editor because it's now this kind of floating section and Divi will render it a little oddly. So it's easier just to go here hit that settings icon so we can get a handle on it and then we can still view our changes. So I think it's actually a little too far up to the left. So let's actually say top maybe 10 pixels. Looks just about right, uh, maybe 15 even. Actually, because we give it a padding of 20, then 20 is precisely right. And then left looks like it's got some margin to it. Um, so we could go and reverse engineer the margin, but for sake of ease, we're just gonna go negative five pixels, um, possibly even negative 10. And there we go, now we're in the exact top left. Okay, and so we're looking good. This is now a floating vertical nav. We're gonna add a bit of complexity and create one of these as a drop down because some styles get messed up when we introduce drop downs in this new vertical orientation. So I'm gonna go to this tab and go to appearance and menus. And from menus, we're going to go to our example CTA menu, and we're going to add a new custom link, just gonna be example, add to menu, and we're gonna add that under, let's say why we serve. And we're gonna add another uh, called example two. Love custom links because you can add placeholders very easily, and you can update the destination of the links really easily in the future without worrying about what the page titles are, or the category names are. That's just my preference. You may choose to do it differently. Because we updated the menu, we need to hard refresh this page. So we're gonna save our changes if there's any, and we're going to do a full refresh page. So it will pull in the latest data about this menu. And once that refreshes, we should now see a carrot for why we serve, excellent. And so we will hit the gear there, um, or rather, uh, it would be nice if we could test the drop down, but we will go over here for that. Refresh this page. And uh, this bar is getting in the way a bit. Um, we're just gonna shift refresh. Uh, and this is a good test to see on the real page, not in the Divi editor, how it's looking. Cause this isn't always indicative of how it will look in the final production. Looks like our spacing got a bit messed up there. Um, ignore this, this is just because we have no other content on the page. We might uh, just throw some gaps in there. But it looks like when we hover, we get example, example two, and the carrot is actually in just the right spot. That's fantastic. But that's not always the case. So we'll um, give some tips on how to address that in some odd scenarios. So go back over here and we're gonna just add a section just to make it a little easier to develop the header. We're going to not even include a module, we're just gonna go section settings, design, sizing, and min height, we're just gonna set it to, um, let's say 100 view width. So however wide the screen is, that's how high the page will be, and that'll give us lots of scrollability so we can kind of see more in real time uh, how it will look. So we'll hit save on that and then we'll refresh our production page. And from there, we can take a look at see why these stylings are a little off. Um, and that's very interesting that it has scrolled away our header. Um, not sure why that is, but that's not really important to our example. The important thing is making sure this is in the right spot. So we're going to click over into here. This is our UL that we've been styling. Um, and that's looking fine. Let's see what's going on there. 
the section itself, I'm seeing a lot of padding on the section itself. Position fixed, top 20, yeah, that's fine. Ah, there's some 4% padding applied to the section itself on this particular breakpoint. So let's go into here, <coughs> grab the gear handle for floating top left nav. Oh, interesting. Uh, this row that we created with a bunch of uh, filler is actually, because of the way the page is oriented, it's, uh, it was placed on top of the floating nav. So we're just gonna move that down and that may help us a little bit. But we're going to hit the gear icon And now we're controlling this guy, uh, which is the floating top left nav section. We'll go to our spacing and make sure our padding uh, on all breakpoints is set to zero. There we go. And make sure we have no margin either because we wanna have full control of that from our own CSS. And so if we hit save on that, go over to sandbox and refresh that. And there we go. Now we're still getting some overlapping though. Now you can see that it's getting cut off and that's because we probably have uh, overflow hidden set in that section uh, where it seems to be cutting off. So we'll go to the advanced tab and visibility and vertical overflow, we'll set that to visible. Horizontal overflow, set that to visible. And that just means that content can spill over the sides if we allow that. And if we pop back into the Divi Builder and we grab the gear icon for the floating top left nav, we'll see that I just forgot to set a higher Z index for this section. It's floating above every other element. And that cutoff point is actually the next section, just vying for its own space. Um, and so we're just going to set this to, it doesn't need to be too aggressive. Uh, most Divi styles float between uh, 0, 1, and possibly 5. So 15 should be more than enough to put this over every other element. You can do as high a number as you like, but um, I like to go no higher than necessary. Uh, and so if we hit refresh on this, we'll now see that this is over top and this floats over top of the elements again. Uh, and now what we'll try to do is add some really funky styling to the text to make this carrot appear in a bit of a more interesting way. So um, just because some people will use more specific fonts and then that will create some issues. So we'll go to menu text, menu font, and uh, let's see, that's a very interesting font. Yeah, let's try that. And then let's try making it uh, really thin or as thin as we can. And then we'll try bring that down to there and bring the line height into itself and the letter spacing will make kind of negative like that. So this is a very extreme example, uh, but it just, with some fonts, you, you can see how this carrot is now drifting kind of into that uh, will be easier to see over here on the production page. You can see how the carrot is now kind of drifting into, um, there's no clear division line between text here or where the carrot should be. So let's say we just want to move the carrot over now and give some more space there. So we'll just play around with this in the inspector first. So you can see we've highlighted this, that's the section that has the carrot. Why we serve, and then there's an after here, which is the carrot itself. And you can see Font family is at ET, that's Elegant Themes Modules. That means it's a Divi icon. Cont is three font size, position is absolute. Uh, and so what we we'll want to do is, is an absolute position. And so we'll just move the right uh, a negative number of pixels. So negative 10 pixels, and that moves it over to the right. Um, you can also move it over, um, since it's based on text, you can move it over by negative one M. That means uh, move it over one uh, letter size, like the space that uh, a letter um, or a character should be occupying. Um, that actually looks to be a bit much, so maybe we'll say just move it over by 0.7 of an M, uh, and then you'll see that the carrot is now over. There's more of a division line there, uh, and when you hover, you still get um, this here. So everything is working fine, just the carrot is moved over to give us more clarity. Um, and then because that's a nice hard-coded value it shouldn't drift uh, outside of the boundary uh, and we can even um, resize the page um, on Safari that would be um, control command R 
and then we can just take a look and see what that will look like on different screen sizes. So we'll bring our inspector down. We'll bring our zoom in a bit. And then we'll just go in and out. Ignore the top bar, but you can see that this left bar here stays nicely fixed. It's extremely small because we're super zoomed out, but uh, you can get the idea that the carrot is staying in place and our floating menu is in place. And if you scroll down the page too, you can see that it stays nicely fixed. And we've got a vertical menu. We've made it look absolutely atrocious with the font changes. However, you can see the mechanics are in place. And to fix that, of course, just go to the block editor, grab the gear icon for that again. And then you can just change those fonts right back to something that's much more appealing. Uh, and rather, I grab the section settings. You want to grab the menu settings, and then you can change the menu text to something more visible and bring that up and reset that and reset that. And there we go. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us in the comments. And if you'd like some help more individually on your own website, feel free to check us out at choosemaple.space. And we look forward to hearing from you. Have an awesome day.